This week on Awesome Cast, fellow video professional Ryan Haggerty is in the studio as we talk about VR 360 cameras and Chella's new bag of holding. That and more Awesome Cast. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast where we talk tech, get geeky uh, with people in the Pittsburgh area using cool stuff. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the tour here in the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk with some techie friends of mine. First of all, from Studio C is John Chachilla, who just literally turned his lights on with his voice. <laughs> yes, that's what I do. When I'm, when I'm at home, that's the easiest way to do it. There's no there's no reaching for switches. That's, that's for... That's so old that's school. For, that's for the other people. The other people, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, of course a gadget, the gadget hound over at uh, Big Bank International Esquire. Yes, yes. How are you doing this fine week? Fantastic, fantastic. We get to hang out and do some green screens the other day at work hard. So we're looking at look a lot of new pictures up there uh, from behind the scenes. But uh, we'll have some new awesome tips coming in the next uh, probably week or so. Uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying the ones that are out there, including Chilla taking off. Uh, and this yes. last one. So, and also we got a couch full today. First of all, of course, she is a podcaster and a uh, uh, sales and marketing person over at the Scare House. Katie Dude is the Scare House, which is now a part of Sorgatron Media. Thank you so much for hopping on board with us. I owe you a sticker. You owe me a sticker. I just looked at your monitor. I was like, yeah, I owe we, you a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> we're probably going to get a sticker on there. Yeah, you have earned the level of sticker. Uh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> that's that's what we get for for. God, you, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you too can have a sticker. Also with us on the couch, Ryan Haggerty joining us of Haggerty Media. And of course, uh, we talked to a, a while ago about Blood on the Leaves. Uh, a fantastic uh, motion picture that we got to see in the theater here uh, locally. Yes, it was fun. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So thanks, thanks for having me on. I, I, I'm enjoying the couch and the pizza and the the new to me layout since mm-hmm. last I was here. This is this is uh, spiffy upgrades, like upgrades. a whole can of spiff in here. Oh yeah, <laughs> and maybe a little Febreze too. Um, but anyways, uh, and of course, Ryan, you tell tell people what you're into other than filmmaking. Uh, so, uh, being here in, uh, Pittsburgh, really into, uh, the gaming scenes, pretty cool here and the, the craft brew scene, which go really well together, actually. Um, we actually have some really awesome pinball going down. Uh, there's some stuff coming up this summer with video games and I don't know, it's kind of a, a good place to, to be nerdy. So I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Yep. And uh, doing video and photo all around. Yeah, so. I, that's work stuff. That's though. work stuff. Really that's a, that's mm-hmm. and that's your I expertise. Left, I left that stuff back at the office. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a colleague up at Work Hard Pittsburgh as well. Now we we were talking a few uh, well, at least live streaming projects and other things over over the last what year and a half. I think we've been hanging around up there. So um, good represent. to have you. Yeah, rep- a town represent right. Oh, yes, <laughs> we roll deep, real deep. Good having you on. All right. Uh, like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. .net does still work. Don't worry about that. Uh, and you can also drop us a line, Awesome Cast, on the Twitter, the Awesome Cast Facebook, or Awesome Cast at sorgatronmedia.com. Subscribe and rate us on YouTube or iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on YouTube and the Facebook page, as well as our awesome chats. We just actually had a talk yesterday. You can see the live stream on ours or her own page. Uh, for Ashley Deemer, that's running for city council here in the neighborhood. Um, what are we? Sixth, fourth? I think we're fourth. We're zone, zone four, six, something. Um, but we had a good discussion there, and that's coming up later in the feed this week. And you can also drop us in, drop into the show here, live.awesomecast.net. It'll actually drop you into the Facebook Live. But that's a good thing to bookmark no matter what we end up using in case, you know, Facebook Live goes away someday. And uh, people can uh, drop into the chat like our friends, like like Wheels is hanging out out there. 
uh, saw Brandon hop in. Katie's hanging out in there too. <laughs> so uh, we get a lot of interaction during the show. Thanks to our friends, Rivers HP, Rivers Edge PGH.com, who are streaming us uh, li- uh, our show replay at Thursdays, 8 a.m. after Funny Money. Of course, uh, that schedule is going to be um, changing here, I think, in the month of May. And also our friends at the 405media.com that are uh, putting us out there. I believe it's 9 a.m. Pacific time. Every weekday, you can listen to the show if you didn't catch it. Uh, so thanks to those guys for helping getting the awesome cast out there. And to our Patreon supporters, thanks to our friends uh, Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level. Gets the awesome cast gold, which chill, I got to tell you about. I uh, will tell you more about my Mac OS issue I was talking about on Instagram earlier today. And uh, Michael Fedor, uh, Mike Fedor show on the Twitter at the dollar fan of the show level. Uh, I say you guys can support the show, but you don't have to throw up money our way. Just share the show. Uh, share it with some people, comment, like it, however, gets the awesome cast out there. So let's get started with our awesome things of the week. Uh, Ryan, I want to start with yours because I, I, I watched, I watched the entire video. I, mm. Did you go, did you deep dive into this one? I, I, I skimmed through it. It was like a lunch video thing, but, uh, yeah. So guy is a developer, I guess, who had a, had an iPhone. He's an iPhone owner and he was spending time in China and, you know, a lot of the components for the things that we use every day are made in places like China. Uh, and you can find these, like if you go online, I don't know, maybe you break the little lens on your camera or your, you know, your headphone port and you order it off of these sites for real cheap. Well, imagine that is like a little street vendor, you know, basically like a street flea market for these components. And he decided to go on a mission to find out how to build his, this is not an iPhone, by the way, this is an Android, not, not iPhone at all. Uh, but he decided he wanted to build an iPhone success from the parts and was able to do that. And I think like did it for maybe 300 bucks or something. But uh, yeah, yeah. So hats off to a D- DIY iPhone 6S. And the entire video is out there. It's how I made my own iPhone in China. The guy's uh, Scott Allen. And uh, he, he I, I, you know, went through this and it's he's going through all those black market shops and everything around this. Right. And uh, in and again, find piece by piece. He had to go back, you know, was surprised some people actually would exchange parts and everything like that. And these look really familiar. These look just like the shops where they're selling T-shirts on the corner <laughs> in, in, in Thailand. What the, I was at in December. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and these are experts that are putting things together, like everything from the board up. Uh, he actually, and I think this is the part here where they had to do a laser cut mm-hmm. for the board to match the iPhone. Uh, so, like, you know, down to that level. And even he got to one point where he's like, oh, it's working, but I didn't get a button yet. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> like, he couldn't actually, like, hit the button to go to to go to the home screen and everything. It, it is, um, some of the podcasts I was listening to said this is like Anthony Bourdain, um, but with technology, the way that he presents in here. Well, well, it's a lot of fun that you're actually able to completely build it from, you know, parts for that price point, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it starts to bring up a lot of questions about when you have a market like that where you can basically build your own. I mean, you have to be dedicated. He went to China. (laughs) Well, I think he's doing he's actually doing work in China. Yeah. Like he was was in there. But, yeah, I mean, I I don't think this they don't they're, they're not. As accessible shops. I mean, our, our radio shacks are like dying. Yeah. And, and I, I, I don't know what else is up here in PA. And like, I've heard some strange store names I've never been to, but yeah, yeah, exactly. And so and nothing has just like stacks of parts, you know, or something yeah. like that. I think we made the, you know, the, the comment about like, like, like a uh, uh, Ninja Entertainment Allies has like the, the, the things, you know, the hacked phones and everything in there, right? But the, nothing like that you're getting like the screen, thing like that. So. Um, but no, really cool. Go check that out. Uh, it's over on Mashable or I think his YouTube page against Scott Allen over on, oh, strangeparts.com is his website. It looks like it's kind of funny because all those people that are nervous about traveling internationally and taking their electronics with them, just don't take anything. Just build it once you get there. <laughs> you, can, you just MacGyver duct tape this thing together. We're like, well, now I got an iPhone for here and an iPhone for home. So there you go. All righty. Uh, Katie, what do you got for your awesome thing of the week? Well, first of all, I had a Gobblerito today. Mm. <laughs> I'm jealous. I have, Team Gobblerito me doing. I have never part, partaken in that. Why not? You it's don't a, know what you're missing. I'm not, I don't know what I'm missing. See, uh, there's people at home that don't know what they're missing either. Like, what goes into this Gobblerito? It's a burrito, but with Thanksgiving inside. 
And they released it in April. Cool. Yeah, they do. It, they had that in pumpkin today. So oh, it's like a cornucopia, only it's a burrito on the outside yeah. instead. Mm-hmm. Very fancy. It's like a burrito corp- copia. Burrito copia. <laughs> but it was delightful. I ate a whole thing. I wasn't expecting to. It was delicious. But yeah, so I have another awesome thing. Um, so we're seeing a lot of VR things coming out now and alien covenant is coming out here soon in the theaters. Uh, they're doing a VR video that you could, that, um, you can watch a new part of Oculus video app. Uh, so you can see the rift or the Samsung gear VR and it's a 360 immersive trailer and it's called in utero. So essentially you're, you're birthing, <laughs> but you inside the birth, <laughs> I know it's like you're birthing. This sounds horrible when you read this, but, uh, you're in the, inside the moment of birth for the aliens epon. Uh, the baby aliens in short um, it's bloody terrifying and incredible according to the article so I thought this was a really cool way to advertise a new movie is it even loading right? I don't know it didn't oh. it, it's not super exci- the the snippet of the video isn't so exciting it comes out tomorrow mm-hmm. and we've seen we've seen these a bit before like you know uh, the, the, the the Avengers one mm-hmm. um, for for uh, Age of Ultron mm-hmm. and things like that, but uh, yeah, no, I think it's cool that they're they're kind of adding these on, especially since so many people have. I mean, everybody that I'm talking to this week has that uh, uh, their their Oculus you know headset that they're able to uh, uh, try this out with. So I mean, I think that's that's really what we're looking for here. I don't know if if Google Cardboard is getting as much play as it used to on its own. Um, <coughs> I don't think it's getting as much as much play primarily because Google seems to be putting a lot of its weight on Daydream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it, I mean, yeah, the cardboard's still out there, but when you have the, the Daydream's cheaper than the the Gear VR, and obviously there's there's other much more expensive devices as well as I, I mean, I, I hear a lot of people purchasing the PlayStation VR equipment. So, I don't know. Is there is there as much demand for building your own when you could get a higher quality device with a controller and it, it just it's just a nicer housing for the device? I think it's always going to be great when they, you know, for, for promotions, when they, they hand out the cardboard ones like Katie had the one for uh, mm-hmm. Star Wars that Verizon was handing out and things like that. And we've seen it with nonprofits handing it out to check out their VR experience around whatever their message is. Uh, you know, some stuff like charity water and things like that. Um, I think there was a, a Planned Parenthood one that we were looking at uh, when we did our 360 talk at PodCamp Pittsburgh. But um, yeah, it, 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 I think that works for like, hey, we want to introduce people to this. Here's a way we can do it. Um, but I think, yeah, they're going to target things like the, the Oculus Samsung headsets and, and Daydream and things like that. Well, as soon as you get your cardboard wet, like it's over. It's game over. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. What we were looking at last week was a Dragon Ball Z one. What looked like it was basically kind of a cardboard esh headset where you just you know put your phone in, clip it in. You know, not as high end as as one of these. For those that don't, maybe you haven't seen it, this is the SDK, the first uh, Samsung Oculus Ooh. setup here. Yeah. Thanks for the donation. Wally. Chilla. I know, right? Um, but uh, but uh, you know, it, it's. Uh, it, but it, but it's like the thing where it just flips up, it sits there, and then like you have sensors for Dragon Ball Z, right? That's a, like kind of a middle of the road hundred dollar set, I think it was. So, but I think you can more get the software um, on top of the, the the gadgets themselves. So, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Oh, producer Missy, who I forgot to introduce because like, the her camera broke right before this. <laughs> Sorry about Aww. that. You just you. you after last week's show sorry no it's like strike no, number two no 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 oh. that was over in wrestling mayhem show yes but this is a different episode this yeah, is a different show and that camera. yeah <laughs> no we're, we're good we're good we're good we're um back to work. aaron is actually tuning in with or chiming in with some vr headset information he's indicating that walmart has vr headsets for 12 dollars 89 cents. what like google like google cardboard style ones those are those are for the swimming pool i think i think those are the <laughs> swimming goggles <laughs> <laughs> It's just mispackaged, mislabeled. You know, Walmart, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> you have to use them underwater for them to work. It's a brand new world. But, but when, you think about, when you think about it, even the you, – you, I mean, we were having a conversation about this at work. We were really wondering, what does it cost even Samsung to make that device? I mean, it's a plastic mold. It is, yeah. Two pieces, 
two pieces of glass. There, there's some. There, there, there's a little bit of electronics in here because it does take the the USB and everything, and you mm-hmm. it, you have to you know connect it in. So I, I'm presuming it's just kind of telling you what it is. Um, I you, think the most the controller part on the side's on that. wired in. There's a pass through port for mm-hmm. for charging. Right. Right. So what was that missing? I was gonna say I think the most expensive part on that is like the foam. That they've they've got it. The comfortable foam. <laughs> yes, the, the comfort that makes my face sweat in the middle of playing a video game. Yeah, that kind of thing. But I mean, it's a nice. You know, it's becoming you know so accessible. The people interested in this probably have a nice phone, right? At this point. Well, then, and you look at the, even the, 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 the like I said, the price point can't be that high because look at the promotion. If you get the the new S8 retail, they they're pretty much giving them away in the beginning. I think mm-hmm. that's how Chachi got his, right? Chachi it came free with the phone. Yeah, and he's getting another one with the new phone, actually, as, yeah. as part of the pre-order for the S8. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's going real good. Speaking of the S8, Chilla. Yes. Oh, and, my new bag. And what, what's that? <laughs> did you want to talk about the S8 that I got, or did you want to talk about my awesome thing of the week? Did I read this wrong? Yeah, so I was more of a more of a joke. I, I got a new Galaxy oh. S8, so I needed a new bag to carry <laughs> <Okay>. it. <laughs> there was so it was the bag I showed you over the weekend, and I'm I'm totally in love with this thing. So if you can, follow me on Facebook, can I? Yeah, can I pull up that picture from Facebook then? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So if you if you follow me on Facebook over the weekend, I felt that it was time due to a tremendous amount of back pain and other various issues. Um, to swap bags. And one of the things I did when I swapped my bag was I wanted something that was going to force me to downsize because I tend to carry <laughs> way too much stuff with me. My um, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there, in, if you look in that picture, I mean, there's my iPad, two laptops, um, a, an uh, Apple TV, a, a, an Apple TV, a huge, um, remember the small, the small speaker phone type thing that I showed you? Well, there's one in the background there that's probably a good 11 <laughs> by or eight and a half by 14 it's a like conference size. it's a conference system it's a conference, it's a, it's a conference system yeah, yeah. um every, so, so it was every time, dongle it was time to, yeah every dongle that you could possibly imagine um which i, I that's actually one of the, the dongles or something that i did keep in the bag or at least the majority of them because i do you'd be surprised how often um i actually have to wire into a network with an android or apple device which i know you probably sounds odd but yes i use i use an ethernet connector with with android devices and ios devices quite frequently get you, get you um, some wheels on that bag mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what a lot of people said is I, no should, shame. I should put some wheels on there no shame so, so i wanted to downsize and i i took a lot of stuff out of the bag um i did keep uh, i'll have to do a re a reshoot with the, the stuff that made the, the final cut. Um, but I, I, the other thing that I was having problems with is I, I like the messenger bag style, but a lot of times because of the weight, I need the, I need it to be more of a backpack. <clears throat> so someone at work found one of these, it's made by solo and it's a laptop hybrid briefcase backpack. So there's, there's shoulder straps. And if you, if you look at the link that I sent from Amazon, if you go down to the second and third pictures on the left, um, the shoulder straps actually disconnect and zip up inside. And then in the same compartment where those would zip up into, there's actually a, a messenger strap that you can pull out uh, and use. So uh, I'm extremely happy with this bag, especially from a from a compartments perspective. I do use things like uh, Gridit from Cocoon and and some other some other carrying case type devices. Um, to help me organize the bag, um, but I was r- really impressed with the the size of the the pockets from like the the front two big pockets that are on it, and then the internal pockets that are kind of part of the main section of the bag. They have a nice um, ten inch uh, tablet holder on the inside, along with a, an area to put up to I want to say a third. You could probably get a thirteen. 14 inch laptop in there. I have a MacBook Pro 13 inch in there um, that I that's my daily kind of go to driver device. Um, but it, I, and I've heard they make a 17 inch model of this, but um, I have not I have not tried to to find that because I wanted to stay to force myself to stay small. So extremely happy with it so far. 
I'll let you know how it holds up. Um, that'll be kind of the true test of time is can it make it six months or more? Uh, the last bag I think I reviewed on this show as well, which was actually reviewed by Serenity Caldwell, which is why I bought it, which is the Osprey. Um, I think it's the commuter backpack. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping this lasts a while because I'm extremely happy with with what I can do with it. And the, the zipper placement's nice too. So when it goes from kind of briefcase to backpack mode, the way the zippers are placed and most of the pockets have dual zippers, it kind of makes sense for, for when you rotate it on your back. So two questions about this particular bag. One is, does it have an insulated pouch in it? And two, why did they not call it the Solo Transformer? Like, <laughs> so in Tra transform <laughs> Transformer was probably taken either by a uh, what is it? Asus has the Transformer laptop, oh. or, or 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 maybe the they didn't want to cause confusion. Or even the Decepticon which... could have worked. <laughs> <laughs> Very deceiving. An insulated pouch there... for your Goblerito, you know. There you go. It's my, my there... built-in to-go bag. There is an insulated pouch in there. What? Um, there, or, well, it's not insulated from, but it's it's padded. Oh, nice. I was going to say that you're ready. You're surviving. You're surviving the zombie <laughs> apocalypse with that bag. It'll last you a while. You, you could probably take the bigger, the bigger uh, external type pouch and kind of insulate that with one of those uh, like f silver foil bubble wrap type things and make it insulated. Do it yourself solo bag. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Uh, so it's a solo laptop hybrid briefcase backpack. It's uh, twenty nine forty eight currently on Amazon.com. We'll have a link over there in the show notes, I believe. Uh, so you guys can check that out too. I, I'm, I'm considering it too. Like I, I, you can see this. This could be a little bit of an equipment bag too. Yeah, I'm, I know your wheels are turning for, the, for that over there, right? <laughs> well, I always think about <laughs> wearing the backpack around day to day. I live mm -hmm. in an area that has a lot of college students. People are like, yeah, it's just some poor college schlub walking around it's like nah mm -hmm. man i'm going to work <laughs> yep yeah hey hey it's one of the same these days in Looks this area professional. Though, right i mean professional absolutely um well if you didn't have a big like pink or orange backpack <laughs> you know <laughs> that'll do it too some jordash uh, yeah there you go uh and my uh, awesome thing of the week uh this is actually a little bit of a local focus thing the national aviary has announced an opening a birdly as part of a, a permanent exhibit uh, created by a Swiss startup called Somniacs. I, I've heard of uh, things like this. So one of those VR things that make you feel like you're flying. And uh, there was an article in Next Pittsburgh uh, this week talking about it. And uh, yeah, it's one of those like you're, you're laying down on this thing and there's like it's blowing in your face <laughs> as you're. So you don't have to worry about your face sweating too much like I do when I'm, I'm using my Oculus. Uh, but, uh, it, and it's, it, it's flying through like a, a New York city cityscape. It's got a little bit of a view here of, uh, what that video looks like. You can get to look around and get that feeling of flying. So, uh, that's one way to conquer your fears, I guess, but, uh, or feel like you're in the dream state, but th this is really cool. And, and, and that's awesome that it's going to be part of that. Um, the cost is $8 per flight. If you want to do it, uh, it's also going to be over at the Pittsburgh international airport, May 22nd through 25th. If you're rolling through there, because, you know, to prepare yourself, I guess. Uh, so that's it, that's kind of fun. Do you, do you know? And I couldn't, <clears throat> I couldn't tell. Is it from the video and the thing? Is it VR like wireframe type stuff, or is it like drone footage? It is most definitely from from the video I'm seeing. This is definitely a CG representation. Okay. Um, you throw it up a little bigger for you guys over there, but yeah, no, it is definitely a CG representation uh, here. And I mean, it looks you good. Come up with the drone footage and and do your own <laughs> with one of those. With, okay, we'll get to some of the camera technology here later in the show, I think. But like the what you would need to do that to do the look around in VR, you got to put a huge camera up there, right? Uh, so I think that's that, that, that's part of the consideration. So um, from there, hey, big shout out to our friends Slice on Broadway at sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh pos podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time now. Uh, good to drop in there, say hi to everybody. They're looking pretty busy tonight. Uh, but uh, thanks to them uh, for uh, supporting us over here in Beachview, right along the tracks. 
uh, in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, as well as Main Street over in Carnegie, PA, as well as down at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hopefully it stops raining and snowing on your uh, on your games. I know there's probably a lot of people in. I know I know I ran into a lot of people in for the Yankees game this weekend, and uh, don't, you know they, they're, they're something a little more New York-y. Uh, is good to have at the stadium. We got the thumbs up from our New York uh, uh, lived friend, Mad Mike, uh, as far as a, a New York style pizza. It's at least equivalent to what you're going to get up there on the streets uh, in Manhattan. So uh, go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, support local pizza. Yum. Down with the pizza corporate structure. Support your local pizza place. All right. Uh, and also, I got a tip this week. So I was up at work hard. And we were playing with some, yeah, you know, playing. We're, we're trying to get some work done, and uh, one of our, our our podcast hosts didn't work. And I was like, "Oh no, our podcast, our podcast host is down. What's what, what's going on, right?" And, uh, and and it was just just it wouldn't work through streaming through TuneIn. It wouldn't work when I went to the website. So I finally, I'm like, "Wait, something seems fishy about this, right?" And uh, so I I knew there was a site like this that existed. So I double checked. And uh, you can go check out um, down for everyone or just me dot com. And it's just a site that pretty much pings whatever site you're trying to get to from outside your network. So you can see if it's you or not. So I, I've had coffee shops where certain sites are blocked, right? Like Facebook.com for some reason, right? And you're like, oh, what's the what's the problem with this, right? And you can go uh, type in whatever your website is. I typed in awesomecast.com. Um, it's just the simplest of pages. You click the hyperlink and it says, uh, it's just you. Awesomecast.com is up. You want to check it on our site. That's it. Just a nice little thing to kind of troubleshoot if you're, especially if you're managing things that are a site or a page or something that's online or trying to get to something you know shouldn't be down and you're not seeing reports. Because, I mean, it's one of those, like, I saw it was down. I went into Slack for the service and I saw nobody freaking out, which is eerie, right? So, and, and see if it was just me or not. So, uh, down for everyone or just me.com. Go check it out. If you're questioning your internet existence. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we had a few submissions here. Uh, Brandon always get putting so much into this show. He's in the chat asking, and I, and I thought I'd kind of pose this to you guys as well. Uh, he's asking if they're, he, he's excited because, um, over there in, in uh, what, Oklahoma City, right? Uh, he Kansas is here. what's that? Kansas City. Kansas City. Damn it! Uh, he, is it a city? He, Kansas apparently, City, Kansas, or Kansas City, Oklahoma? I, I, I don't know. Isn't it Missouri? I think it's Missouri. Anyways, can you look at the show notes. <laughs> Where's that? I'm, I'm reading his text. Up. Kansas City, Missouri. Fans, I'm in there. I'm in there. I, yeah, okay. Kansas City, Missouri. It says right in the notes. Uh, but no, he, he says... Arcade, Man, if you only had a producer. Arcade bars are opening up. Arcade bars are opening up. <laughs> There's a lot of flailing going on to my right. Um, Ooh, arcade bars one. are opening up in a lot of places there in Kansas City. Um, he was wondering if we're, we've, ever, we've ever attended any. Are there a few in Pittsburgh? I know there's a few. Like Victory oh, Point, I man. know, is one. You, mm-hmm. no, you've done the tour, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh has... The world championships of pinball. Of course. Eat that, Kansas City. <laughs> Eat that. And of course, replay FX and everything like that. That's a blast. And 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 when I was just mentioning, um, it's, it's her ears must be burning because I I mentioned in the chat how how when I visited Veronica in San Diego, we went to the a, a barcade down there and I got to check that out and we played a broken game of six player X Men. <laughs> well, and don't forget about uh, looking for group nearby over here mm-hmm. in Brookline. Uh, it's not a bar, but uh, you haven't you didn't hear this from me, but there may be BYOB going on over there. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. check it out. So I mean we, we have a lot of options. There's a really cool gaming community here between that and replay and, and, and the Papa championships and Well and, and what's cool between those so you always think about uh, things as being these self contained communities a lot of time, but because it's so easy to share stuff online, people start to find out, oh, you like to have fun too. And all of a sudden the people that are doing board games are jumping into pinball or jumping into VR or going and seeing live music. So it's uh it's a fun little overlap of communities that want to do fun things. Absolutely. So. And nerdy things. We encourage that. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, to, to stay on the video game um, point for, for a second, uh, there is a report. This is just a report. Um, this is the, provided by WWG.com. 
um, that they're. Well, I think we might have mentioned the NES Classic is going off shelves, even though they're not. Like they just said, yeah, we're done. We're selling enough, you know. Sorry, sorry for, you know, not having enough for everybody. Uh, but supposedly they're going to do a Super Nintendo edition by Christmas. That graphic looks legit. <laughs> Exactly right. I like the the yeah. galaxy sky, the old eighties like mm -hmm. uh, graphic behind it. Like I'm, it, it's out of this world. It's just like you remembered, right? Yeah. I mean, zap. But uh, but yeah, I, I, it's weird that they're doing like this limited edition thing. Uh, but uh, but hey, I, I think it's cool that they're doing. Uh, they're they're if nothing else, they're nice collectible things. Well, it's that excitement too, right? Mm -hmm. When when you know, usually a Christmas rollout for a console, even if it's like retro console, that's a cool freaking gift to get. Like mm -hmm. emulators are nice to be able to play games you never played before, but there's something about if you did play the original, being able to sit down and, and like plug it in and watch it, you know, load up on the TV and everything and have your drinks sitting there next to you that nostalgia not, is uh runs deep. Mm -hmm. Not having to blow in the tape. <laughs> yeah. One thing you brought up a good point, Ryan. It's like this is things like this are the perfect gift for kids, teenagers, our age, adults. You know, I mean, there's a whole range of oh, you know what? They'll love this no matter what. You're not going to say no to this. Well, mm -hmm. it's like playing in the same space as somebody else too. Mm -hmm. Online gaming is not going away anytime soon, but I think there is like people do crave you know being able to play something with their friends mm -hmm. in the same space. You know, hence the you know arcade bars and so on going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want, you want to physically push your friend and laugh at them. Yeah, it's yeah. Not as you want to be able to fling the controller in their general direction yeah, like, and not mean it. <laughs> so, quote unquote, not mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, go ahead, Chiller. So does this mean there'll be a uh, N64 for Christmas Thank you. 2018? That's that's kind of what I'm with hoping, right? Seven Goldeneye and and some, <gasps> some Mario Kart. Oh. Aren't you glad oh, you got the TV support. sitting here? <laughs> <laughs> well, the big point is because you can get like the retcons and everything. They use the controllers, it loads them off, and it and it upgrades them a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a super, there's a Sega Genesis one where you have the cartridges, but it doesn't upgrade it. It's still the old co uh, composite uh, connection, uh, right? Okay. Now the the mini Nintendo was nice because it actually did upscale things for HDMI, oh, so wow. you had a lot cleaner picture than almost any option available. Yeah, and the timing and everything, uh, you know, a lot of people that are doing video game high scores and stuff talk about the latency between using this kind of TV versus what you were supposed to use originally with it and stuff. So your hardcore gamers are probably, like, excited about that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, too. Weird stuff, like, you know, we got a RetroPie <laughs> here in the studio, and I have, like, a, X, you know, a 360 controller hooked up to it. It's weird playing Mario with a 360 controller. <laughs> you know, it just, it just doesn't mm. feel entirely right, you know? So, uh, and I don't know if I'm ready to get like USB adapters for every controller <laughs> I want to use on this system, right? I mean, I have the controllers. I just, just it just seems like well, a little bit. Did anybody weird. have the classic Nintendo or experience it? How, I mean, to give any feedback on how it was? Nobody I'm aware of. Hmm. They, they have had conversation with curious so it was be curious about the overall quality of you know it's a nintendo product yeah. and like yeah. that's their thing when they put something out or if somebody's launching something on their system you know classically they've gotten it right absolutely that's one thing they know it's gaming then they're, they're not going to farm it out like sega did to a third party <laughs> to, oh. to, to, to do that although it was nice that that, that did have a cartridge and you could kind of resurrect all those games because I have like an original Sega Genesis around here, and sometimes it's not too great with those cartridges. So, all righty. So uh, let's roll in, Katie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what is? Wait, is this a positive story? There's. We notice we haven't talked about Uber for a while. Oh yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> because we try not to have negative stories as much as possible on the show. Uh, Katie, are you are you're bringing them back around here? It looks yeah, this like. is interesting. Well, it's it's super interesting because they want to make this VTOL, which if you didn't know, that's vertical takeoff and landing plans. Um, by 2020, they want to make this a thing where you just get a plane on demand and um, pick you up and fly you. Uh, the the plan is for the 2020 World Expo in Dubai. So it'd be mm. that between Dallas uh, was ready to have a or they want to have Dallas and Dubai ready for demonstrations. So they really want you to be able to just pick up and foof away. There's a nice video on there. It looks really fancy. Like this is what this is the future. Look at that. It's electric. <laughs> <laughs> Meet George Jetson. Yeah, I know. Pretty much. I'm just kind of pick up and go. Um, I mean, that's the way to beat traffic, right? 
Yeah. I guess. Oh, we have a video. Is this a, a CG rendering we got going <laughs> oh, on? Oh, yeah. You got to have one of those. That's It's the day of CG renderings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have a flight simulator. How, how many landing spots are they going to have for these? Because it's not like you can just land them in a parking spot. Jeez, the surge pricing on landing zones. <laughs> well, well, it's interesting because they have them landing and taking off from the helipads. So it's like wherever there would be a helipad. Mm -hmm. could like be a potential spot. House. Yeah. Uh, like on top of Chilla Towers. I feel like we were in the 1%. This would be a totally different conversation. We'd be like, <laughs> what color can you get it? You know? We're like, yes, on my on my helipad. Or the heat system. Right. Heat my helipad. Mind, mind whose houses we have to bulldoze to put in a new helipad? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere for the blue one. Absolutely. So that's awesome. Uh, we, is this re how realistic is this? I, I guess I if it, this is going to be a demo by 2020. That's yeah. completely possible. And, and kind of in a limited... Doesn't 2020 sound so far away, but no, it's not it's three years, years from now? Right well, it's, now. it's kind of like taking that drone idea to, like, passenger level, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's got, like, the four blades and everything. And I, I don't know, drones are definitely having an impact. Like, um, uh, what was it, newscasting? Or I'm trying to remember which which field it was where drones are replacing. Yeah, I think it is newscopters. Because mm -hmm. they're able to have a high enough quality feed off of a drone. That you don't need a helicopter with a camera person and, bring, and it saves money. And bring the feed and the, and shoot the feed from closer. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right? You also have Well, good. You also have less issues with regard to like traffic restrictions for air traffic control. Mm -hmm. I mean, some still apply some, yeah. with regard to a drone, but it's easier to fit something this size versus something the size of the room mm. into a space. Okay, I'm like the end of this article. Uh, it's TechCrunch. If there's one word to describe this VTOL project from Uber, it's this: distracting. <laughs> this is. They said it was a plan long before the drama, but <laughs> it's like that's kind of a little slap at the end there. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, that's okay. Any, anybody who's following our Twitter account right now is probably just smacking themselves in the forehead. Yes. Because my tweet about this story was: Uber is looking to launch (parentheses wait for it) on-demand flights, as then you launch a flight. Oh. oh. You're welcome. Well, let's bring it around. Chilla, tell me what Slingbox <laughs> is doing. So so this is one for you. So Slingbox is borrowing the technology they built for the hopper, and it's actually using... The, they built the, the hopper for Dish. Mm -hmm. um, same, same CPU, same juggling video streams but what they did is they took it and built it into something uh, it looks like about the size of like a paperback book wow. it comes in at a thousand dollars but it's handles all of your video streaming and builds an on-the-go studio Ooh. it also allows you to connect up to 10 devices wirelessly you can actually use old phones and and an older equipment to to connect to it um <clears throat> You can you can only view or monitor up to four of the, the feeds at a time, but you do have 10 cameras connected. Um, it does out-of-the-box instant streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube, um, but obviously you can also bring your, your projects into something like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere if, if, that's your, if those are your tools of choice. Um, it does uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second, um, and then 1080 um, additional 1080p live streams at 8 meg. Um, it's a little over a pound. And <clears throat> looking at the device you were using over the weekend with that SD sled, this will take an SD card and it uh, also allows a USB-C port for storage. But it has an HDMI input for bringing in additional video sources and an output for previewing and inline audio. Um, so pretty cool. It all, they also have a forty or fifty dollar USB C extender that lets you plug in additional USB three hard drives and connect to gigabit Ethernet. Um, so kind of a studio in a box that that's about the size of a of a small paperback book. Could you uh, power it over a battery a battery source or? So it it is it is you can plug it in. It also has an optional an optional battery battery pack that they claim gets hours of, I think it's an hours of battery life. Who knows what that actually means? Oh. I'm sure you could also, I'm guessing you could probably charge it over the USB-C port as well. 
Wow, that's a cool price. That's a game changing price, right there. Well, we were just talking about like one of those kind of streaming <laughs> devices. Uh, but, but, which... uh, uh, Teradek. Teradek. They, they yeah. do more broadcast high end, but they right. have one called Video that's yeah. like their prosumer model, and it's it runs around like maybe six hundred or eight hundred or something like that, depending mm-hmm. on which one you get. But that only does one feed at a time, from what right. I understand. Right, and this is this is a little bit more. It's like it it, it sounds like it's boxing up everything that we've been uh, taking with the rig. Yeah. You know, the giant rig that we do and, and, and put it all in a box. It was so taking multiple streams. The idea is as long as your camera can transmit some kind of wireless signal, it can connect to that other than that one HDMI port. Is that kind of the idea? Yeah. The, yeah. <clears throat> all the, and it sounds like they're going to have an app for Android, iOS, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, I'm guessing it's going to build its, and I think it may have said in here, it builds its own ad hoc wireless network, kind of like the Mevo does. Um and you can kind of everything just connects together. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Damn. Well, staying on video. Uh, it, oh, go ahead. Real, real quick, too. Um, I did find the part of the article. Um, uh, the battery packs an additional 150 bucks, but it gets you three hours of battery life. Sounds like it's kind of a specialized thing, too. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to be the Thomas Ninja that you know mm. that, that, that that we've been. Both us playing with versions of that. It's going to have its first field test this week as I take it along. I bought extra batteries and everything. I'm just all set for it. So we'll see how that goes in the middle of nowhere. Adventurous. It's very adventurous. So maybe a little risky, but uh, hey, I make it happen. Hey, uh, you, we mentioned the 360 stuff before, and, and remember I was saying like you know I, I had a question doing the 360 flying thing because I think you need a camera more akin to what we saw from Facebook. So I, I, there's two stories in here. GoPro's Fusion Spherical Camera and uh, Facebook's News 360 Camera. Um, neither... Whoop, where, no, there's the beach from, from the screensaver. Um, but uh, but neither of these have prices, which scares me <laughs> a little bit, right? What was that one? The the, the, the $60,000 one that... Um, um, was it Nikon did? No. One of those? Mm, not Nikon. Not, no, I think I know what you're talking about, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, that yeah, like a sixty thousand dollar one like that. That's what this reminds me of, um, and they have a couple of renditions. Uh, so, so the and this was from F eight last week. So you know, just finally able to kind of get a little bit into it. Um, there's Nokia. Nokia, Ozo. thank you. Yes, the Ozo, uh, and it's uh, the the cool thing is it does like depth. It says it has you know, like pixel depth to this, which is going to make things interesting for moving around in a 3D space. And then GoPro, just a little bit of information on it. GoPro is looking to do a, a spherical uh, fusion camera, which from what I can tell, it seems like it is going to be a, uh, you know, a, a, a Theta, a Ricoh Theta uh, kind of equivalent uh, for, for what they're doing here. This is not working. I'm just seeing the full video <laughs> instead of 360 in the browser here. So, uh, but you get the idea. Uh, so, uh, hey, keeping them small and powerful i mean gopro is kind of the leader in that so it'll be interesting to see what they do well and it's like the, the a lot of the big players are stepping into the game now mm. i think you know it's it's always like trying to figure out that new way to push content a lot of uh news media you know new york times has been doing a lot of different stories where they just do a 360 shot you're spinning around in i don't know in a, a prison somewhere like an old prison where the story would have taken place and seeing what that space looks like all the way around you and kind of um, gives the viewer some agency on how mm-hmm. they want to experience that particular video. But mm-hmm. uh, these big players jumping into it means that there's probably more ways to distribute that are coming with it. You know, like Facebook's really getting heavy on it. So that with that kind of interest, I can see all the people wanting to provide people with the tools to see what they're going to do with it. Like that's the cool part. Absolutely. Uh, just an update on the Ozo. It is now forty thousand dollars. Oh, <laughs> it's so, really come down. Yeah, we could totally buy it now. Get two. <laughs> Get two. They're small. What was the crazy one we were looking at? That was like around fifteen hundred or something like that. Like a, I can't even remember that one. Like a, like about this time last year, it was like it was on pre order, and yeah. I was like, "Ooh, should we jump on that?" It was like because you saved like a grand on it, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's probably not even. It was nice because one of those you put up on the stick, and it's had. A computer that rendered everything live so you could do streaming with it and you just you had to set this thing up and you could string the the computer over and hide it somewhere uh so it could do its stuff and the video would be ready to go versus like the ozo of course is a little bit higher quality um but like the rendering time on it is like ridiculous well and now you have um 
it's the kind of the go, not GoPro ripoff, but they do a little action cam. Uh, Yi, I don't know if you pronounce it Yi or the Yi, mm -hmm. the the Chinese company. They have one too. They just released an NAB, I believe. It's a 360 cam, but it'll do like a higher resolution if you're just recording. But then it has a, a live streaming option built in for a lower resolution, where it'll stitch the image together and all that fun stuff. Because mm -hmm. it looks like, according to this article, this wearable article, Facebook's around 360 is 30,000. Google Jump Odyssey is only 15,000. <laughs> so there's, I mean, if you're looking for high end, Google Pro Omni is 5,000. Yeah, we got all your high end options if you need it. That's awesome. Um, Missy, yes. when you talk about sound tattoos that you, you had in here. Yeah, this this one stopped me in my tracks when I was going through my Facebook feed because I was like, wait, did, did I actually just see that? It is a tattoo that you can hear. Uh, what the company is doing is they are developing a way to play sound wave tattoos on your phone or tablet using their using a an app and it can record up to one minute of sound they put it into like the sound waves that you would see for you know a podcast recording for instance and then they tattoo that onto wherever you would want it tattooed so what what they're saying is you can have a loved one you know record a message so you know, my, my mom is in California, you know, she calls and leaves me a voicemail message that's, you know, hi, honey, I love you type of thing. And I can get that tattooed on my person and then use the app to like scan and play it kind of like a QR code. Mm -hmm. And it will voice out in my mother's voice, essentially, um, you know, same tonalities, at least uh, the, the message. So the tech is the reader. Is there anything special about the ink, or is it just? I uh, not that I can tell. And there's, it's very not like a lot of information about the tech behind it. Oh. Just that it's um, record a message from a loved one. Where your favorite lyrics uh, with our unique patent pending technology turn up to one minute of sound into a tattoo you can listen to. Uh, so it, it's not okay. How how does it work? It, they they do get into it. The app is trained to look for each unique sound wave. Uh, when the camera finds it, it plays it. Uh, so I guess that they're completely, they're working on developing the app to, to take care of like the intricacies with it. Um, but they're partnering with a tattoo artists around the world who will be trained and certified to do sound wave tattoos. <laughs> so it's a certain process that needs to go through hmm. in order to make this happen. <laughs> that's, that's really cool. It's, it's uh, so now when you upload a video to Facebook, they have the option for it to automatically try to listen to the audio file and I wonder if it's listening or if it's looking at the waveform and what it's doing. But our technology is becoming better at, well, I mean, we don't communicate in like drawn sound waves, but it's becoming better at interpreting what it is that we're trying to communicate and making it easier for us to do that. Oh, absolutely. Fun. Absolutely. Until they, you know, really learn what we're saying and, and try to kill us. But <laughs> for right now, it's fun. <laughs> well, think about all the secret messages you could send with this. Like, if you could somehow do, like, a temporary tat, and if it's just the, what it, the reader versus the actual ink it's used, and you could just seriously send secret messages like, oh, bleep. And or, then <laughs> or mistakenly yeah. get, like, when people get the Chinese symbols on yeah. their arm, they're like, oh, it means harmony. And it's like, nah, dude, that's not what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this sound tattoo says my mother's saying, I love you, and it's actually, screw you, good. <laughs> like, like, Katie, Katie and I laugh about the, uh, the no regrets. Yes, the tattoo the Snickers commercial, <laughs> where she tattoos no regrets instead of no regrets. Uh, like, can you imagine if somebody <laughs> messes up the tattoo and it now says something else, or the the sound wave comes out something different, or purposely does it? You know. Yeah, exactly. You know, who knows? Yeah, this is great. But no, it's, it's kind of interesting because tattoos will no longer just be seen; they can be heard Aww. too. How sweet it is! Oh. That's right. Yeah, I'm not going to get on board until like I can taste or smell them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you want to taste some tattoos. <laughs> pizza. Oh, this pizza is, is old and rotten. No. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, uh, Missy, what, what events are coming up that we should be aware of? Well, the big thing on my mind is some of the one of the things that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. We are doing the not awesome cast. It is PodCamp Pittsburgh. Uh, we're, we're having our, 
evening with PodCamp session tomorrow, and it's going to be talking with people in varying stages with regard to politics and social media. So we've got a uh, couple of political voices. We've got Brian Crawford from the River's Edge, who does a, a political satire type of talk show. Uh, we also have uh, David. He's coming on. He does uh, some blog posts and different things. He's talk, He's done some presentations at PodCamp in the past um, about some political discourse type of stuff. And in addition to those two voices, we also have an actual politician who's using social media uh, with a lot of different things. Uh, like Sorg mentioned, Ashley Deemer is this week's awesome chat. Uh, so she's going to kind of step back into that discussion a little bit tomorrow and talk about how she's using social media with her campaign. Awesome. So that's going to be fun. Uh, aside from our events, there are also some other events going on. Uh, the Huntington Breakfast Meet Briefing, uh, Mitsubishi Electric, is going on at the Rivers Club. It's hosted by the Pittsburgh Tech Council. That is on the 27th. I saw Sorg, actually, you, you posted this or you brought oh. it to my attention in some capacity. The Academy P Pittsburgh uh, Beta Builders Pizza Party. Because it, it's, it's coders and pizza. How could you not love this? No, this is completely tech. Like yes. this, is, this is what we do. Um, Academy Pittsburgh, they're, they're going to be hosting that and putting that on. Uh, working Together is Working Better, Co-Creation and Innovation. That's with the Pittsburgh Tech Council on May 3rd. Co-Creating in Pittsburgh, Creative Clash uh, at Alpha Lab Gear on May 4th. And that's uh, at Alpha Lab Gear again by the Pittsburgh Tech Council. The other fun thing that we've been talking about the last few weeks is uh, the Millville Music Festival coming up on May 13th. So we're going to be doing some fun stuff with that. Uh, the bands have mostly been announced i know brian's been doing a lot of rollout announcement for for some of that with his millville music minute type of stuff but it's shaping up to be a really cool community event in millville so if you're available and around on the 13th you might want to check that out uh alternative digital marketing make google work for you that's also with the pittsburgh tech council on may 17th and the create festival is coming up on June 1st at the August Wilson Center, again with the Pittsburgh Tech Council. And the great thing about that one is uh, it's also kind of starting out the Pittsburgh Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. So that's that's going to be kind of a fun thing to, to check out, if you're, especially if you're looking at Arts Festival stuff. That, that's kind of like Arts Festival Eve going on there so yeah a lot lots of cool stuff coming up in the next month or so can i drop a few uh tech related ones in there sure, go for it well one that is not tech related to start with tomorrow is also natu national national uh, pretzel day so you know pizza <laughs> and tech is, is pretty good the pretzels may be a close second you know unless you can get us a pretzel sponsor i don't think we can mention this there's that, <laughs> that pretzel sponsor well, what, what did they have up at uh, <laughs> slice on broadway was it the little knots that are like cheese filled mm. or whatever yes it's pretty close Okay. It's, is, it, uh, is it any any kind of pretzel, or is it just like soft pretzels or pretzel rod day? I will not judge you for how you celebrate National <laughs> Pretzel Day. <laughs> a pretzel um, is a pretzel is a pretzel. And then on uh, the 29th, which is a Saturday at Phipps, they're doing a Future Fest, which is just kind of like display of science and tech and free stuff out at uh, Phipps Conservatory. If you want to do an outdoor, like fun future kind of event thing, solar panels and that. There you go. Go check it out on phipsconservatory.org. Phipsconservatory.org. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining us. Where can people check out what you're working on? Uh, you can go on haggertymedia.com. Uh, I'm also on Facebook and do the Instagrams. And uh, you can come down to work hard and say hello and, and maybe uh, come in there and see what all the, the folks are doing. Yep. Swing in. Say hi. You know. It's friendly. They like it if you bring pizza or bring pretzels. Pizza. <laughs> or leave your Domino's bag behind. cupcakes. Cupcakes. Yes, that happens too. <laughs> so Katie Dude is at K Dudders on the Twitter. Yes. I don't think I'm, uh, I'm not doing anything exciting lately. What? Who would you talk to this week? Who did I talk to this week? <laughs> did I talk to someone? Did, do you have an episode of the Scarehouse podcast you want to pimp? No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what Sword was getting I at. I learned a lot about burlesque dancers this week is oh, what I'm trying to get to. Oh, okay. I was like, that was last week. Yes. Sword learned about burlesque dancers, and I think we got a lot of 
words that aren't normally on a Sorgatron Media podcast on a Sorgatron that's, Media podcast. There, hey, if it's good with Facebook, it's good with us. I don't think there has been such a girl power uh, episode <laughs> of a podcast ever on this network. It was that, such a good podcast. I it was a good show. One. It was a good episode. You learned a lot. It's amazing. You're like, mm-hmm. I didn't even think about that. Huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And uh, at Chilla on the Twitters, ChillaTech.net is the website. And uh, it's John Chilla on the Facebook. Get your bagging tips hey, from him. Is that is that a Google mug that I see there? Oh, oh, this this sweet <laughs> Google mug. <laughs> yes, here? Yes, it is. yes, it is. Look at that. Temperature change. Mm, no, that, that's no, just how it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's hey, cool but, like that. It's, I know you were talking about work hard. Does, does work hard do any tours or anything like that? Uh, stop on by yeah, and stop, uh, stop. we'll be we'll be happy to give you one. I think I think you just <laughs> had one, didn't you? So sort of also working on a fun digital project for that. Well, there, there is a little bit of like it didn't. Okay, so so I, I, I tried I tried to do the indoor wait, street wait, view. Wait, 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 wait. What? Use that for gold. We'll use that for gold. Use All right. We'll tell you about the things that didn't work on gold. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, uh, Missy, at Rebellious Flaw on the Twitter, uh, producer of the show, keeping things together as much as before I take it all down. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much to our awesome chat room joining us in uh, all night, including Brandon and Wheels and a bunch of people I saw popping in through the night. Uh, thank you so much for checking the show out. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.